Hey there, you're tuned into MEA Worldwide. I'm your host, Elena Jordan, and today I am joined by the phenomenal Jessica Nicole. You guys have seen her as Kim on Scandal, Astrid on Fringe, and right now, she is heating up the screen <laughs> on The Good Doctor as Dr. Carly with Sean. Mm -hmm. Now, this role started out as kind of a smaller part and congratulations because now Thank you have you. been upgraded to main cast. Yeah, <laughs> it's very cool. I have to say, I have to ask you too, because from the very beginning, your introduction with Sean, it was so cute and so <laughs> flirty with the, I'm gonna throw a rock to your window and you know, your response is so perfect. Did you know from season one that this was going to be the ultimate arc, that they were going to end up kind of starting his first real relationship with oh, Carly? Absolutely not. No. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we all have our hopes and our dreams and our wishes, but um, I'd come in in season one as a, as a you know, kind of small role recurring character, and she had a very short character description. There wasn't that much to her initially, but it did say that she was cute. And I remember thinking, why is she cute? Like, you know, they don't put anything extraneous in those character descriptions. So if she's cute, there's a reason she's cute. And so obviously, you know, there was a little bit of kind of flirtation. It's kind of hard to tell with Sean's character, like if he really <laughs> likes somebody because he's not super demonstrative. But, you know, obviously we, we recognized that there was something there and then they brought her back for season two. But they kept saying they were gonna bring me back again and it wouldn't happen. And that's just the nature of television and the writing of a narrative that, you know, makes sense in the show. But I, I just could never put too much like hope into it because you just never know what's gonna happen. And also I was auditioning for other things. So if I had booked something else, you know, whatever. And then obviously at the end of season two, you get to see things get like kind of heated up with Sean and Carly, just in their relationship, like they're becoming good friends you can see. And then of course, uh, the season ends where he asks Carly out on a date. And we all scream woohoo with him. <laughs> I didn't even tell my mom that that was what was going to happen, really? and she lost her mind. She had no idea he was going to go to her house. She didn't know where he was going. So it was really, really fun to, Did like... Did you watch it with her? No, I didn't watch it with her. So my mom is in Florida, and so she was like watching it separate than me. And she says she wants to be spoiled, but it's a lie. She doesn't. She loves the show. She loves to be an audience member, and she gets annoyed when I don't tell her. But then when she gets to actually experience, you know, what the writers have done, then it like makes her whole day so great. So I keep my mouth shut. <laughs> Which, I mean, it's not surprising because the writers do such a good job on this show. It's phenomenal. I know. I like that they don't they don't write what you're expecting all mm -hmm. the time. But I also don't think that they write, you know, kind of random stuff to throw the audience off. It always makes sense. Um, but it feels like real life. You know, you don't always know what's going to be happening in, like, the drama of your life from day to day. And then when it does happen, it's like... Okay, I guess I could have seen that coming, maybe. So I feel like it's, you know, as true to life as you can get on a, a show about doctors who are saving a million lives every single episode. Which is also, this is a unique uh, kind of take on the, the, doctor, the doctor procedure, yeah. too, because this also, especially this season, is one of the first times that we've ever seen a neurodivergent and neurotypical relationship. Yeah and really celebrated yeah. the neurodivergent characters as strongly as they do on this show. Yeah. So what was it like for you having that brought in and kind of having the pacing of their relationship a little different oh, than how we've seen on other shows? I, I really, although I feel like, you know, romance is romance and it's universal, but there is something very special about this particular relationship. And I think that the writers took a lot of pains to make sure that they showed each of the steps. And I think in television, with any kind of romance that they show, it's usually flirting, a kiss, you stay overnight and they're in a relationship and you kind of, as an audience member, have to fill in the blanks of everything that's happened. And they're not doing this with these characters because you don't fill in the blanks with Sean. <laughs> you get to see him process things and you know deal with things and either struggle or succeed or whatever, but that's a huge part of the way that the show is written, I think, in general. So they brought that into the romantic relationship too. So you get to, and you're right, it's not um, maybe a stereotypical relationship, at least in terms of like television and what we're used to seeing. Um, and I think that that makes it exciting because 
neither one of them really knows what to expect. I think Carly has had, you know, years of dating under her belt and has, you know, an idea of the pacing of, you know, a relationship that she's in. And she has had to, like, forget everything, I think, that she has known or come to expect from a relationship and kind of start from scratch with him, which I think is great for her and a challenge for her and certainly a challenge for Sean, too. And they're trying really hard to make it work, you know, instead of running into an obstacle and saying, you know what, I can't do this anymore. It's too much. It's just not going to work. I mean, I think they get fed up at times, but they're they're really patient with each other. And I think that that's also something you don't always get to see in romantic relationships. Like it always works out beautifully and, you know, you see the other side of it. And this is a journey. This is a real journey. <laughs> and we love taking that journey to Parsha yeah. because you're so fantastic. Oh, and gosh. we just, Thank you. we love Carly and your delivery is so fantastic. And Thank you. I have to say, you are talented in multifacets as well because <laughs> talking about kind of a unique perspective, you have some of the most brilliant comics I have oh my seen gosh. on your website. I'm serious. I love it. There's one, your J plus C. I cried. Mm. It's beautiful. I Thank cried. You so much. <laughs> and as an avid, an avid comic book fan myself, I have oh, to say. Oh, that's so cool. I didn't I know that. Know. That's awesome. Yes. Uh, and I have some questions for you about Vixen as well, too. Oh, my I gosh. <laughs> but I want to ask you about these comics specifically because they do offer such a unique perspective. I know we're both from Birmingham, Alabama. Yeah. We're from Birmingham, we're Alabama. From Birmingham. <laughs> um, and right now it's great because especially in the city, it's really pushing the past few years, really being very progressive. Mm -hmm. But when we were growing up, that was not as much the case. Yes. And you really reflect this in your comics in a very unique and beautiful way. So what made you want to explore this medium to tell that story? My uh, my partner now, but at the time it was my girlfriend, Claire, she bought me my first comic book that I'd ever read. It was Mouse, which is a great introduction to graphic novels. I said comic book, it's more graphic novel, but it was the first time I had ever um, experienced, you know, like a narrative story told in visual format. And I have a background in illustration, like I minored in studio, I just always loved drawing. And so I read that book, and then shortly after that, Fun Home came out by Alison Bechdel. And then, of course, that book I was like, oh my gosh, <laughs> you can tell your story like this? Because that was the first like autobiographical mm -hmm. graphic novel that I had ever um, read. So I went to the store and I bought um, how to make comics for dummies book. Really? <laughs> I read it cover to cover. And I was like, great, now I know how to do it. Because I knew how to draw, but I wasn't, you know, super familiar with that kind of format. And so anyway, I would just spend hours, because I'm an actor and I have lots of time between jobs <laughs> in my life. And this was years and years and years ago, but I would just listen to podcasts and I would draw out comics and try and tell these stories. I, had, I always loved telling stories about my childhood and my experiences, but I wasn't sure how to do it because this was like, I'm about to really date myself, but this was pre-blogs. Like blogs didn't really exist, live journals existed, mm -hmm. but that was kind of it. And so I didn't know a way to kind of share my story. So I started drawing them. That was the beginning. And um, and yeah, that's what I've done. I, I will be honest, I have not drawn comics in like years unfortunately because I got into sewing and so that took like precedence. Now that was actually the next thing I was gonna ask you too because I know that you also attempt at Badgley Mechka. You have this huge oh background in fashion too and your Instagram is lit too. Like I mean your fashion is Phenomenal. I have to say, Benchley Mishka, I was just a receptionist there. <laughs> and I didn't make clothes. So I would look at these gowns and I would be like, oh my God, I wanna wear I wanna wear that one day. So it's so funny now, years later, like I'm still kind of like connected to that world, but at the time I felt so out of place and like, this is a whole long weird story. I had like done this modeling job where they dyed my hair blonde and my hair fell out. So I had, I was no. like, I looked like a calico cat. I was wearing like a news cap every day and I was a receptionist at Bachelor Mishka. I wasn't auditioning, I wasn't acting. This was in New York City a really long time ago. And so to see myself now, <laughs> Knowing that if I get invited to an award show, I could probably call Badgley Mishka up and say, hey, would you guys let me borrow something? I used to work the front desk. 
I love that. <laughs> I love that. I love inspirational stories yeah, like that too. Yeah, absolutely. And I have to wonder, are you going to ever maybe incorporate them? Maybe do your own line as well? Oh gosh, I really hope not. No? <laughs> no. Really? Here's the thing. I don't think that we tend to, how do I say it, support people who don't necessarily want to capitalize on all their talents. We always think, oh, you're good at this. How do you make money? How do you put it out in the world? How do you, how do you, how do you get it out there? How do you be bigger and better? Sewing is like this therapeutic thing for me. I just love doing it. It's so much fun, but sewing for other people, aside from like my wife or family members or something, but sewing for profit, it just takes all the fun out of it. And so I'm really goal oriented in keeping sewing just this thing that I do for myself. It's kind of like self care, actually. I like that, but you don't <laughs> feel that way about acting because you love acting, but it's well, all. I certainly act in front of my mirror all day long, but. <laughs> That's not really, it doesn't give me the kind of joy I think that sewing for myself brings. Acting doesn't feel like self-care. Acting feels like my job. It mm -hmm. feels like uh, the work that I do. But like knitting and and even drawing, um, those things feel like very specific to my personal needs. I love the idea <laughs> of hobbies as self-care. Yeah. That's, that's a great concept. I and, and I don't want to um, to like shade anybody who you know is a really crafty person and sells their stuff that's great i have done that in my life that has been a part of you know being a struggling actor and making it and that's okay and if i ever have to do that again in my life i'm very happy that i have you know a talent or a skill set that i can you know kind of fall back on if i need to but if i don't need to then i'm going <laughs> then, to keep then you're it good. yes i'm good and kind of talking about your skill set as well you mentioned podcasting how you would listen to your podcast oh my but gosh. you're also so famous for Welcome to the Night Vale, which is one of the most famous podcasts podcast. out there. Phenomenal. Your voiceover work is incredible. And I told you I was going to circle back <laughs> to your Justice League action oh, that's episodes. Right. Yeah, where you Good play job. Vixen. I play Vixen. Now, Vixen, for those of you who aren't a big nerd like I am, has the uh, the Tantu Totem that gives her yeah. the power to... Mm -hmm kind of summon the powers and abilities of any animal, alive or dead. Uh -huh. So I have to ask you, if you could have her powers and have the ability, would you ever summon Jean the cow from Friends? Oh my God. <laughs> this was a connection that I could not have seen coming <laughs> from. A mile the question away. no one knew they wanted the answer to until now. <laughs> Would you Listen, be Jean the Cow? And what would you think it would be like? Absolutely not. <laughs> Jean was lovely. Jean's a cow. No shade, Jean. But I always had to stand. I would be like brushing Jean's teeth or combing Jean's hair. And Jean is a real cow that would do real poops and real peas. So I would just be in this like small space with this cow and then hear just this huge release. And it's a lot that comes out. And then they'd be like, all right, Jessica, can you just hop out so we can clean up the area in there? And there'd just be like liquidy, no. just things. There'd be things. And it smelled really bad because you're in a tight, you're in a tight space. So again, no shade to cows. That's who they are. It's cool. <laughs> but I don't want to be a cow. So it's much better working in the lab with Freddie Highmore oh than working with Gene gosh. the Cow in the lab as Astrid, basically. Everybody loves that we worked with the cow, but I'm telling you, I, every time I went back to Canada and I went through customs, I'd have to go like, yes, I have been hanging out with livestock because that's a question that nobody ever says yes to, but I would. And they'd pull me aside and they'd be like, what, what, what livestock what are you on? Know? It was just kind of a pain. That's hilarious. I love that you had to basically declare Gene the Cow at customs. Stuff. I did. <laughs> I truly did. That's amazing. So if you could summon any animal, what animal would it be? People are going to hate me, but I think snakes are pretty cool. Ooh, I like that. So I might be like, I don't know, maybe like a python or something. Ooh, a little parcel tongue in here. Right? Like like <laughs> they're cool. They're sleek. They're strong. They don't mess with anybody unless you mess with them. That's fair. And they're beautiful. They come in like so many cool colors. That's a good animal. Thank That's you. Thank you That's very much. Pick. And if you Thanks. could be any superhero besides Vixen, oh my gosh. who would you choose? Let me tell you something. I want to be my own superhero. A superhero that always knows what the weather is going to be. 
and therefore always knows how to pack on a trip. That's the superpower that I want. Let me tell you how often I found myself in a new city without zero appropriate things to wear. And I hate it so much. So that would be my superpower. I don't, she's called um, Miss Luggage. Oh, Miss Luggage. I like it. Miss like Luggage. It. Props for Miss Luggage. And she can pack your bags in 30 seconds or less, and it's going to be everything you need and not one thing more. I think that is phenomenal, and I can't even imagine a way to end this better than Miss Luggage. So Miss Luggage! Miss Luggage! We will pack up this interview here. I know I've shouted out your website a few times, JessicaNicole.com. Check it out. It is absolutely phenomenal. <laughs> but where else can everybody find you on social media? I'm also on Instagram. I am Jessica is Try Curious because I will try anything <laughs> making related, guys. Um, I love like woodworking. I like to paint. I like to do all sorts of things. And then on Twitter, I'm not there very often. I don't get Twitter, but I, I just show up because I have FOMO. I am the Jessica Nicole on Twitter. Oh, well, thank you so much for joining us. Be sure thank to you. check her out as Carly on The Good Doctor. Thank you. <laughs> and be sure to check out all of our other interviews as well at meaww.com. That's MEA Worldwide. And I'll catch you guys next time. Elena Jordan. See you then. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.